fox, friend or foe. What about fox hunting? Would you hold a vote on bringing it back? I would absolutely commit to holding a vote to repeal the hunting ban. I think it's not proven to be in the interests of um, animal welfare whatsoever. Animal welfare matters. Animals suffer. People know that. Scientists have proven you can't forget about that. This is a fact that is a reality. Put my cards on the table. I've always uh, thought the hunting ban was a pretty bizarre piece of uh, legislation. Were attacked in their own homes uh, by urban foxes. It's bitten twice uh, as she slept in her bed. To see if we could change the law so that urban foxes could be treated as vermin in the same way that rats and mice are. The usual Tory solution of any problem is to kill wild animals. They will try just to spin it and try to claim that uh, hunting is important for wildlife management and, and we need to control foxes. No, that's right. Science doesn't support them. Foxes are regulate. You don't really need to control them. Since the dawn of the human race, we've always felt the need to hunt. It started as a strategy for surviving. So when and why did it become a game? And why only some animals and not all? The red fox, one of Britain's most well-known wildlife inhabitants, after millenniums of hunting and discriminating, are they really vicious, vile pests that pose a threat to our society? Or has the romanticism of foxes in popular culture caused people to change their perception and realise they are just timid animals that got unfairly caught up in one of Britain's most famous traditions? Walt Disney was able to imprint in the minds of children and change their perspective on foxes. So why is it so hard to change the perspective of the older generation? Throughout time, foxes have been a prominent figure in folklore and mythology. The Chinese claimed that foxes had nine tails, one for each of their lives. In Japan, the people would leave offerings to the foxes at night in exchange for wisdom. In early Mesopotamian culture, the fox was a sacred animal who acted as a messenger of the goddess Ninasag. However, the foxes were not treated so kindly in Britain. The red fox was seen as a nuisance and were hunted by farmers with hounds in the 1800s, which quickly turned into a sport for the higher class. From this, humans began to hunt deer, boars and other animals in the same way. Despite fox hunting being banned in Germany and other European countries throughout the 19th century, fox hunting in the United Kingdom still remained a popular sport and would do so until the 20th century. There was such a demand that foxes were even imported from France, Germany, Holland and Sweden. Fox hunting was seen and continues to be seen as a sport which is fairly classist. We campaigned for many years, actually for 80 years, to be banned, and we managed to get the Hunting Act in 2004 to ban hunting with fox. Because not only is it good for the hunt, it's good for controlling foxes, it's good for doing all sorts of things in the countryside. Then we will bring it onto the floor of the House and we will win, win the vote to actually amend the Hunting Act. So any arguments that they put in the other side are easily defeatable. So if the ban is just uh, disappears now because the political landscape leads to this, don't worry, we'll bring it back. Many people are fearful of foxes due to the diseases they carry. However, foxes do not carry anything harmful to humans. The average pet, cat or dog, is much more susceptible to spreading infection. Although many people are scared of foxes as they consider them dangerous, there are less than 10 reported cases of fox bites each year. However, there are over 250,000 cases of dog bites per year, 50 of which are fatal. We 
we don't have duties to any wild animals. They're not useful to us. But they're not generally you know, given the same level of concern. The socio-zoological scale is a scale of consideration uh, that animals are given uh, within society. Where animals that are that look like us, or that, uh, and I mean primates, or that are useful to us in terms of the food animals. All the animals we've traditionally had as pet animals tend to be at the top of the scale, and ones that are considered to be not useful or dangerous, such as sharks and, and big cats, uh, or um, uh, look very different from us, so fish for example uh, have just as much ability to feel pain as mammals do but they don't look like mammals at all. These animals tend to be at the bottom of the socio-zoological scale so the effect of that is that they're given less consideration within legislation and by society at large. The red fox. One of Britain's most well-known wildlife inhabitants. Hunted. Demonised. Loved. Protected. Debated. Will the human opinion change, or will foxes still be targeted in years to come? For now, we hope the feeble red fox will thrive harmlessly through our ever-growing British society.